Hello, Icron fans! This is Shadow Fury 33 bringing you a match between Numbers and Schalke. This is going to be a replay match played on hills. Numbers is currently choosing his race. He is in the bottom left corner of the map, while Schalke is in the top right corner of the map, also choosing his race right now. He is choosing Grekum, while Schalke... Sorry, Schalke is choosing Grekum, I should say. Numbers has not chosen his race yet. I believe he is going Grekum, though. And yes, he is. And actually, this is a game that was on GoingReplays.org, and is apparently a game where Numbers manages to make a fairly early pod. A pod at about 2 minutes and 30 seconds. And this is important because pods were really popular and then there were a lot of balance changes because the game basically revolved around them. And because of those balance changes, it became difficult for players to actually get pods. And so it's been one of those challenges for a lot of players to try to figure out if they can get pods again. And I'll just, sorry, I'll just get the volume up for you guys here. So you hear the game itself. Anyway, so, Numbers, like I said, is apparently planning on going for a fast Faropod build. He has his Faro being set up right now, and Octos are being built on his LCRP. He's going to jump back because Schalke was going in play mode, and we are also in play. So, we just skipped past him. But anyway, no worries. Numbers is making three Octos for RPs, and another Octo... Actually, no, two Octos are going to the same location for RPs, so this is actually going to be slightly problematic. He has two RPs on QP and one on LC, which is rather different. Most players will go for early LC RPs with Octos, not usually early QP RPs. Shalka, on the other hand, is going... Which is hard to tell, he's behind me right now. He is going pure LC. This is what Grecon players normally do, is pure Liquid Crystal. Although he has one QP RP, but that's... That's still playable for a standard rush build that most Grecon players tend to do. So a Seppi and Faro are being sent out outside of Shalka's base, instead of progenerating from inside his base, Articus is not being used to tank, which is rather unusual. And an early reef, wow, an early reef coming up from numbers, so this is part of the whole strategy. He needs to get advanced structures quite early on, and if he does that, then he'll be able to get an early spire, probably from this Faro, just given how fast it would have to be, but I'm guessing he'll build a Seppi first, and then send the Faro out to become a spire, and then from there he'll make Faro pods using the Faro and Seppi. While Shock, on the other hand, is sending more Octos. These Octos will be becoming RPs, and the Faro and Seppi are being sent bit south as well, probably being progening, and yes, here we are, here's the Seppi I was talking about. It will be used to progenerate, and this Octo here actually is leaving progeneration mode, oddly enough. He is giving an RP, I'm guessing another Octo will be progenerated before the Faro becomes a Spire, and here we have the 222 mark, and the Seppi is becoming progenerated, and an Octo will be coming up very shortly. Eventually, Octo, yeah, right here. The Octo is here. The Faro will be now deprogening and turning into a Spire, while Shaka is building more Octos and an Octopod. No, sorry, not just Octos. He's actually building everything. He has so two of each and an Octo, two of each base class unit and an Octopod, while a Spire is being built up for numbers. This is actually a bit later. It's a two two minute thirty second Spire, not a two minute thirty second Faropod. Now, of course, he has the Octo and Seppi he needs. Once the Spire is or Octo is actually done regenerating, a Faropod will be able to come up at the three minute or two minute fifty eight second mark. Not quite as early as I had expected, but still fairly early. Now, back up when Numbers is. This Faropod's actually going to be very effective. Numbers already had that. He was fast-forwarding throughout the game. I just want to showcase this strategy a bit more in detail before going and actually jumping around the timeline. And a Faro is also being built up, so the tribe will become more stable. We'll be able to regenerate any unit, not just Faropod's. And now the Faropod is cloaked, going up, jumping back, checking out what Shalka's doing. Shalka does know that this attack is coming. He does see it, and... He does have a regeneration triad actually hanging out right in front of Numbers' base, which Numbers' far pod will not hit. It will be going completely past them. Back at Numbers' focus point in time, actually, Numbers is paused right now. He doesn't have chronoporting, so he's not chronoporting. He's just paused, probably re his orders around. And his far pod is still attacking Shalka's main. Shalka, on the other hand, is not focused on there at all. He's focused on getting his octopod, getting in the way of Numbers' octos that are trying to build RPs. Numbers is focused on getting these Octos to actually attack the Octopod. The Octopod will be going down, but the Octos have been slowed down. Numbers' economy is being slowed, while Shaka's economy, he has his expansion, partly. His main base is being heavily attacked, but only one of his RPs has actually been destroyed. The rest of them have not been attacked. Jumping back about 35 seconds, or 40 seconds, we see that Numbers is actually not attacking this Triad, still not attacking the Triad, and the Triad is starting to get very scary. Num Shaka is sending out a lot of units. His entire Triad has been deprogened again, and is going to be sending out Far closer to Numbers' base, it looks like Shaka is going for a bit of a rolling barrage on the progenerators. Assuming he progenerates with these guys, he's just been pulling them forward and forward every single pass, just bringing up, like lifting him up, going forward, dropping him down again. 
So it wouldn't be surprised if we see him drop them down again in progen mode. Anyway, numbers, Firepod still attacking. We saw this before. The Octos are coming in and attacking the Octopod. That is still happening as normal. And the Octopod is... Everything is attacking that tanking RP. These three are not going into progen mode yet, oddly enough. I think Shaka is probably setting him into progen mode back here, or will be. He is focused on this point in time. And numbers has changed his Firepod's tune. It is going to be attacking the Octopod coming in. The Octopod is going to be avoiding the tanking Arcticus. But no matter, the Firepod is still attacking it very heavily. A Faro is going to be needed in order to take care of this. And Shaka's actually jumped back even further. It looks like he is trying to get this Faro even closer, although you can't actually order them to do anything yet. While further in the future, about 30 seconds, or about, not even 30 seconds, about a minute in the future, Numbers is focused on fighting off this attack. He doesn't have any Faros that he can see coming in to attack him yet. He does have the Octopod, which is very annoying. And another Firepod has been set up, which has also cloaked. So both Firepods are cloaked. This is how you're supposed to use Firepods. Cloaking them and sending them out, that is what makes them so powerful. And of course, the green time wave is coming, which has brought some changes. Shaka did. Actually, no, Shaka's changes have not been propagated. The red time is going to propagate the changes where he stops attacking the Arcticus. And the Octopod's actually going all the way around. Going all the way around the natural instead of going down through the main. Well, sorry, I said, should say the side ramp here. The Octopod going back to harass the RPs while Faros are able to detect these Faropods. And the Faropod is going to be going down. No way to deal any real damage. Numbers has, however, probably changed this up and. Yes, he has. Retreating the Firepod to deal with the Octopod attacking his back in his main. That is going to be far more effective, provided they actually make sure to keep it down there. Undoes the orders. And that will be more effective. Going back, we see that Shalka isn't too worried about this. He still, as far as you can tell, is able to attack Numbers. But Numbers, his Firepod is not close enough yet. His Firepod is actually moving away before it's going to be taking any damage. So that Firepod is going to be able to completely defend as it was before that we saw. Two Oct... No, not Octo... Yes, Octos. Oct two Octos coming up, and... They are going to be becoming RP, so it looks like there are a lot of our artists that are going to be sent out to the little backdoor expansion here. That's going to be fairly effective in terms of economy, but numbers, let's see, if he is focused on that, yes he is, he has those Octos that are set up, they will be likely building RPs at some point. They're definitely out of the main base, and numbers does not realize that the Farpod has not been as effective as he would have liked. Actually, no, I, I'm mistaken. It actually has been fairly effective, the Octopod was forced to retreat, and then... This is after the num Numbers' little counterattack with the Faropod. So yes, Numbers is able to deflect this attack coming in from Shalka decently well. Surprisingly enough, an Octo coming in, trying to deal with the Triad, dealing a lot of damage, and neither player has actually researched anything. No research going on, there's a fair bit of resources for both players, but Shalka is out of orders in the near the unplayable past, and S Numbers still has about half of his Chrono Energy left. But he is going to have to deal with a lot of this attack coming in, and this attack is being very constant. Like I said, this sort of rolling barrage of per generator units coming in and just continuing to be more and more proxy. That's going to be the big thing that's going to make it hard for numbers to actually win this game. However, he has gotten rid of the Faros. One more, just double checking the further in the past, he isn't able to get rid of all the Faros quite quickly enough. No, he is able to get rid of the Faros quickly enough. The Faros will be destroyed, and that. Unless the green time wave is actually going to bring some changes. I think Shaka did manage to use his last order in the past to deal with this, and... Yes, he did! His last order in the past did actually manage to keep his Faro alive long enough to get rid of the Faropod, and Numbers will not have a Faropod to defend with. Numbers focusing further in the future, no current reporting yet, but he does have his Faropods up as far as he, as far as he can tell, his Faropods are perfectly safe. Jumping back into the Impelable Past, he sees that his Faropod actually was destroyed, and that's going to cause him quite a bit of concern. And when he is focused, he is... Certainly trying to get his defenses up, very frantically trying to get defenses up against the Octopods. We see that in the present, nothing has really gone wrong. For Numbers, actually, Shalka sees that a lot of attacks are coming in from Numbers, but Shalka knows for sure that Numbers is not is not going to be able to deal a lot of damage. Jumping back at the 647 mark, I really should be updating these a lot more for the timing, but Shalka, very close in his attacks. He's able to get attacks very quickly, very close to the base. And it looks like Numbers' base is being completely overrun. Numbers has one order left he can, hand, he can issue right now. Issuing it to get rid of, to get his fire outside of the main. And that will be not enough to get out of there. Looks like the fire will be able to escape somewhat, but there aren't enough units coming in to escape, and that fire, what it could do, really, really tricky move it could do is spires can actually turn back into Faros. So the Faro could turn into an Arcticus, and the Arcticus could be used to get another triad. But I don't think that'll be able to work. Shaka has far too many troops. He has tons of resources at this point in time, and let alone when he's actually focused, and when he's actually focused. He is getting, well, let's see, he has two full triads going up. He has a lot of units coming up from each triad. 
a reef coming up, which will allow him to get any tech he wants. And looks like about a dozen Octos, along with a couple of Faros and Seppies. So he, coming back in about a minute, he is definitely quite stocked when it comes to units. And actually, further in the future, no, he has not used his tech up. He's just double checking what's going on. And further in the past, back when we were about, actually it's 826 mark, about a minute before, above where we were focusing before, he's definitely overrunning numbers of space. So, while numbers did do a good job getting in the early Faropod, he didn't manage to make a count. Shotgun did a very excellent job defending it. Very good use of Octopods as an assault unit and as his primary power, really, against the Faropods. They can take a lot of damage, so unlike Seppies, they are able to deal a lot more damage in the long run, but Seppies are much more effective against air in general. Now, Numbers is trying to check around, see if he can do anything. It looks like he actually... I just need to double check that it was the Spire, but... It, yes, it was actually the Spire. He did bring the Spire down and demorph it into a Faro. So he did exactly what I was thinking he was going to do. But the Faro, trying to get away, getting defended by an Octo. So Numbers' Octo is trying to hold off Shalka's Octo, and the Faro will be able to get out of the way. Actually, an Octo is around, so he doesn't even have to turn to an Arcticus. Just get... The Faro down, turn to a Seppi, and then from there he'll be able to build up, but I don't know if he'll be able to do it in time. He has enough resources to get something good, but he doesn't have a lot of resources that... Or, I shouldn't say a lot of resources, he doesn't have a good position advantage. He has no position at all, no economy, getting a Seppi up, and trying to do what he can. Thankfully, in progen mode, units do auto-heal, so that Faro will be able to get a lot more health for when this attack comes in, but Shalka is looking out, trying to figure out where the attacks are going to be coming from, and where Numbers' triad went, because he knows full well that there was a triad going out. At the same time, Shalka is setting up his resources in the center of the map, and he's also got an octopod just scouting out the northwest side of the map. He's scouting up the entire map, although unfortunately missing exactly where he needs to be, just getting out of there. He is getting rid of one RP that was next to some boxes that Numbers had. Numbers, on the other hand, further in the future, is not really able to do much. He is trying to get some RPs in the southeast expansion, but he has he has forfeited his attacks. His tribe is being attacked quite heavily near the past, and he or near the unplayable past. He has no way of getting out of this. So nicely done by Shalka defending that Faropod rush, and again another game shortly. That was the first game. There's actually two games that these two played against each other, trying to get the same strategy. This is the second game we're going to be going over now. That was the first game before. Curious to see how well this went. Still the same map, still hills. Numbers loves this map, so if you ever play against him, try to avoid playing on hills. Because he loves this map and he's really good at it. Anyway, this is the second game. And Shalka is still the red player. He's actually gone Vekir this time around. Numbers is still going Grekum. Of course, he's trying to go for the Faropod build. So both players picking the race quite early, actually. And Numbers will be able... Well, he's going to send his Arctic out to tank. Shalka is getting an economy build going, setting up all of his RPs on LC. Probably, possibly all six on LC. I'm not sure yet. I can't see the Q on Zion here. But at least five on LC. While Numbers is setting up his early Octo. That's He mentioned to me that early Octo is kind of the way you get this strategy going. But I, I can... I can understand early Octos are cheaper than Faro's from the Arcticus. They're about 10 LC cheaper. Not a whole lot, but it does adjust the timing slightly. However, it's just a metagame thing. Almost all Grecum players go for Faro first time out of the gate instead of Octo. And here's the 6th RP on LC. So Shalka is going heavily for LC and then for QP. Probably going for... Not sure exactly what really is a slight timing difference between 5 LC, 1 QP, and 6 LC when it comes to trying to get early vehicles. It's noticeable, but it's very slight. And he is going for another Q... No, another LCRP. Okay, he is... Is he going full infantry attack? He is definitely moving out with the infantry. They're going to the center of the map. I wouldn't be surprised if he goes for a proxy build in the center of the map. I'm just going to double check. And further in the future, he does have more infantry coming. He is actually going for more of an infantry strategy than most Vector players do. And Numbers is getting 5LC, 2QP. Now getting his... Octo set down, probably going to build a reef with the Seppi very shortly. And yes, he's getting another Seppi for Progen, using this Seppi to build a reef, using that far to build a Spire once he gets the chance. Shalka rather oddly going for this little strategy. I'm just going to double check what he's doing for in the future. He is actually going for Proxy Foundation, that's what I thought. So he's definitely liking the Proxy build. It is something I really want to see players use more of in Akron. Mid-ground depots, but gener generally Proxy construction, because the way the game is set up, the maps are really open. 
and of course the way the game is set up you can undo it if it screws up and you can change it around how it works you can always make it work and of course your opponent has to can scout that out and work with that so it creates this really nice mind game really nice back and forth it looks like the far will far pod will actually be slightly delayed Numbers is that it looks like he's going for a causally independent triad over in the northwest expansion before he goes forward with the Faropod. While Shaka does have his mid ground depot built up and he will be getting vehicles very quickly. Now let's just double check. He is getting vehicles. He's getting a couple Zion Pulsers. Not sure if he's going to upgrade teleport on them. He is getting a hierarchy setup. No, he is not. He's just going for a straight attack. While Shaka is going to be seeing that Numbers doesn't have much in his base, yet he is getting advanced structures. He will be getting a Faro to build a Spire shortly. He has a Faro set up now, and the Faro and Seppi and Octo are being set up for, like I said, a Cosling Independent Triad, most likely. Yes, there is a Cosling Independent Triad. There is, in the future, some more Octos, but they don't see the Depot, so that is that can be ignored safely. And Faro's, Faro Pods are being built closer to the 5-minute mark rather than the 2-minute 30-second mark. But I think this will be a much safer strategy that currently, that Cosley Independent Triad, sorry, is in the northwest corner of the map. That's going to help out a lot. At the same time, the fact that he does have a stronger economy, to, actually no, he doesn't have a stronger economy to base this off of, but he could easily get a stronger economy to base this off of, and he does know about this proxy strategy, or at least knows that there are infantry in the center of the map. He now knows about the proxy strategy, although he would have known sooner. Or actually, you know what? I'm curious. He will know now, definitely. But I don't know if he knew sooner, because that was not propagated as quickly as it would have been. Shaka actually got away from there. Didn't propagate it as much. He does know. Shaka, I mean, Numbers does know now. But I don't know if he knew then, because that attack, when Numbers was focused, didn't come up and it wasn't propagated much anywhere else. So these two Octos that were sent to destroy those infantry are being destroyed by Zion Pulsers very quickly. One of them is going to be able to get through, but it will not last. It has hardly any health left. And this harassment should be very effective. I think Shaka will not be attacked quite quickly enough. But back in the present, no, he has not changed around his strategy. It doesn't look like he's going to be going for a straight move on these Zion Pulses, which he really needs to do. And Numbers changing himself up again. He is... No, he isn't actually changing how that works. He does have his independent triad set up on the northwest side of the base. He is getting his far pods much earlier than he was before, though. Closer to the 4-minute mark rather than the 5-minute mark, which means he'll be able to get them in time. They block off these Zion Pulses. Only one Octa will be dead instead of basically everything. Shaka, on the other hand, does have his mid-ground depot. He is getting skip teleport on one of the Zion Pulsers. And he does have a Teth Pulser, but what he needs is a Shin Deer and a Shin, or a Shin Tercher. Probably a Shin Tercher. Regardless, the Farpot is trying to defend against the Zion Pulser, doing a valiant job. The Zion Pulser is trying to deal with damage it can, but it's not enough. These between the Reef and the self-healing. However, the Farpod has been destroyed. One of the Farpods on the ground was destroyed. Numbers further in the future does not realize that this Farpod has been destroyed, yet he thinks he has two Farpods. He only has one. This blue time wave won't destroy it, so it's until the green time wave you won't notice. He is moving his Arcticus back to help tank closer to the Triad from the looks of it, but it won't matter. Shaka. Like I said, I'm surprised he hasn't moved his Zion Pulsers. He is back here. He's not changing around the way he's setting up his Zion Pulsers. He is getting a main base depot, though, so he can actually build directly from his infantry. Rather than getting infantry first, I should say. Also getting auto defense at the 424 mark. Getting skip teleport in that Zion Pulse we saw before. And numbers also jumping back, realizing he's lost one of his Faropods. He will likely be trying to set up something to defend. And he is actually forcing Shaka's forces to retreat. All Shaka's forces are retreating. They aren't bothering with, with this attack quite yet. They are. Shaka's actually quite focused far in the past. See what he does. I don't know if he's going to get skip teleport on these. I, I quite doubt it. He's probably going to go with the same tactic than before. But he is going to be focusing on getting rid of the Arcticus first. And now avoiding the Arcticus. There we go. Now he's avoiding the Arcticus. Surprised he's not attacking directly, though. He's just retreating as it is. Not a bad idea, really, given that he doesn't have much to work with. He does need to get some detector unit before he's able to get rid of these Farabas. Unfortunately, he hasn't gotten rid of that second Farabas, which means that he's going to have far more to deal with in the past and possibly in the future, or in the future, possibly in the past, I should say. If Chronoporting comes up for Numbers, Numbers is not getting it yet. He is getting a third Farapod, however, and the first two Farapods are going straight into Shaka's base, getting rid of his QPRPs, or at least shutting them down temporarily. Likely get rid of one or two, though. Both players now focused about two minutes down from here, about the 423 mark. This is back when the Farapods were just getting built up before, and Shaka still retreating his forces, not changing that tactic at all. He is getting a skip teleport Zion Pulsar around the side, and I think this actually will be able to... It is in the third expansion to possibly intercept those RPs if they were to come up, but Shaka has not taken care of that yet. Jumping back to the 424 mark once again, we see that 
The Octos actually managed to get out of this because the harassment was changed. The Octos managed to successfully get to the depot as they were planning to before, but this Zion Pulsar will likely stop them in the process. No, it won't! It's going to teleport straight past them, and the Octos are going to be distracted, however. Once it teleports again, they will be able to go straight to the... Yeah, we go. Straight to the depot. These Zion Pulsars should be able to defend, but I don't know if Shock is aware about this attack happening. Looks like he's more worried about the Far Paws, and the Blue Time Wave is going to... Pro no! The Octos are retreating, in fact. They are not... They are going to be attacking the Zion Pulsar. They are not going straight for the base. I think numbers... Might have made a mistake there. Yes, he did make a command mistake. He did intend, in fact, to have them go into the depot. Getting rid of a Shin Beer. Very powerful target. This is the best target to get rid of because that Shin Beer is gone. That means that's going to be a lot harder for Shalka to get air units. Not that much harder, but he does need an aerial control center to begin with. Also, Shalka's getting a Zion Turcher. This is at the 516 mark, about 30 seconds after the Fire Pods originally came up. And Zion Pulsar is able to deal, unfortunately, with the Triad. Able to damage one of the Octos very heavily and start harassing the RPs, but still, it's a bit too late. Numbers does have two Fire Pods. And Shalka does not have an aerial control center. That's what he needs. He needs that. He needs to get Shin class units. About 10 seconds in the future. Zion Turcher is up, but it's taking a lot of damage. Not cloaking. Shalka is not focusing this time. He will be cloaking that, I'm sure. There's no reason not to cloak that unit right now. Except for the fact that he's not looking at it. He is, however, looking at it now, or was, and he hasn't actually changed that up. So, just double checking around the timeline. It looks like Shalka is going to be... As far as you're concerned, dealing a lot of damage in the main base. Numbers did change this up so that Zion Pulsar is not actually there. That Zion Pulsar is destroyed by this green time wave. Or well, actually further in the past, but the change was propagated by the green time wave. Jumping back about the six minute, six second mark, we see that Zion Turcher has been cloaked. It isn't being sent out to attack, but it has been cloaked. You know what? I'm a bit surprised Shalk isn't building foundations, because foundations have cloak detection. That would be the best thing to do right now. He has auto defense. He just gets some foundations, the foundations, and everything else will start attacking directly, and the Teth Pulsar will be able to help out as well. And I think Shalk is going to be doing that right now, because there's no reason not to. He has the resources, he needs the cloak detection very heavily, getting Shin Beers to try to help with cloak detection, but the foundation would be definitely his best bet. It would last longer, it would be able to help out, he be able to build quite a few of them too, and from there he'd be able to build Aerial Control Center, which he needs to get that Shin Turcher, which would provide him with some permanent cloak detection, or at least cloak detection that's much harder for the Far Paws to get rid of. Back when Numbers is... No, we're a bit ahead of where Numbers is. Back when Numbers is focused, three Octopods will be coming in from his base. Two Farpods are still harassing. He still sees them as harassing, and that is the truth. There is no change on that front. Farpods are still harassing very near the Unplayable Past. About 30 seconds away from the Unplayable Past, they are going to be... No, 20 seconds away. And then Foundation finally being built up, which will be able to get rid of these Farpods. Two Foundations as well. One of the Foundations is going to be destroyed very quickly, but the other Foundation is going to last long enough to get rid of this Farpod. The Farpod is going to be destroyed. That will be the end of Numbers' harassment, but Numbers still managed to deal quite a bit of damage. Shut down Shalka's base for a while. Shalka does have enough reserve resources, it won't matter too much, but he needs to very quickly get some Shin Turchers. I know there are Octobots coming, it's not quite the same situation, but still, Shin Turchers, get them. Octobots aren't great anti-air units, and Shin Turchers will be very effective against them. Zion Pulses are still going to be effective, though. So Shin Turchers aren't the only option, but... Still, Shin Turchers are probably the best option at this point. Zion Turcher is going to be useful as a support unit to help out, but Shin Turchers would be the best all-around unit to use to cover this situation because Shalka needs to make sure that any more Fire Pods aren't going to be able to just rip them to shreds. And more foundations being built up, no aerial control centers yet. Numbers at his point in time is, or point in time at which he's looking, is building more Fire Pods. Like I said, he is going to be building more Fire Pods, I was sure of it. And the Octopods are going to get rid of this mid-ground depot, or at least try. Shalka not able to take care of it quite yet. Not getting an aerial control center either, which is really surprising me. He's focusing on getting more Teth Pulsars. Not on... He has Teth Veers. He's getting Gate Tech, too. So, probably going to get Slip Gates. Like I said, I'm surprised he isn't getting anything more. More Farpots coming in. Get rid of, getting rid of the mid-ground depot. Foundation set up for cloak detection, but that won't help. Farpod is... Not cloaked, actually. Numbers isn't even bothering to cloak that one. The next one is cloaked, which will be a problem. And Numbers, at this point, is not building any more units. He is getting weaponry, which means either plasma cruise missiles or chrono bombs. Either one would be very devastating to Shalka right now. But he is getting gate tech about the 850 mark, which means that he should have it. Well, he will have it once the time wave comes over. Either him or the green time wave comes over and propagates that. And Numbers, as I mentioned before, he did set up this Cosley Independent Triad at the start of the game, and it's paying off. He's getting an expansion in the Northwest and the North. Nothing's actually come up for him in terms of being attacked, so he doesn't even need to Chronobore back from there. And here we are. Shalka has Gate Tech. Gate Tech in progress it will be finished shortly. And then from there, we'll be able to see him get... Oh, that's weird. Anyway, we'll be able to see him...
get Gate Tech, and that will be enough. If he makes the best use of it to get out of this mess, because he is losing map control. He doesn't have timeline control, but he could get it if he does use Gate Tech. He lost his mid-ground depot. That's a very big loss for what he had. And three more Farapods coming in from Numbers. Numbers back when he's focused, about two minutes ahead, is starting to attack the Farapods and dealing a lot of damage in the main base. The other two Farapods have not been set up at this time. They aren't here yet, but they will be once the screen time wave comes. Farapods are taking a lot of damage from the Foundations and from Auto Defense. Also the Zion Tertiary helps out a lot. So these Farapods are taking a lot of damage. I think Numbers is going to be double check and further the unplayable pass to make sure that everything is going as expected. And Shelka actually built up a lot of foundations to help with this defense, buy himself some time. He did have enough resources to pull this off, so it's not a bad idea. Now jumping forward about two, about a minute, we see that 1037 mark. Gate Tech is researched, but no Slipgate has been built yet. I'm almost wanting to guess Gate... I don't think it's Replay Corruption. I hope not. I don't think so, but it does seem unusual that he doesn't have any Slipgates up yet. I think... No, he is just getting it for teleport, actually. He's getting a Zion Tercher around to attack. Getting weapon... No. That's numbers getting chronoporting on top of weaponry. So, let's say, a chrono bomb probably in about a minute. Actually, probably when numbers is focused. Chronoporting is almost done for numbers. And looks like that's going to be very powerful. We see that the Farpods, all three Farpods now, are actually attacking the main base of Shalka. Shalka does see this coming. He has his Zion Tercher in the back. He's not teleporting in yet. Although, I think that might have been a mistake. And he does have to deal with chronoporting now. Numbers has chronoporting. He is definitely chronoported back into the past here. Or I'm sure he's chronoported back into the past here. I can't imagine him not chronoporting back given what he has. But I don't see any chronoport arrivals yet. Nothing glowing, no, no re chronoport delay, so I don't actually see it. But I'm sure it's there. It has to be there. Numbers doing what he has to do, it, it's going to involve chronoporting somewhere. I'm just going to double check. I think a Chrono Bomb might have been released at some point. No, Chrono Bomb Departure was detected, though. And now I'm curious where it was, because that is going to be the important part of this game. One of these power pods is the one that Chrono Ported back. And here we are. This one Chrono Ported back. So the arrival is coming in. Going to be attacking even earlier on. Like, I'm really surprised that Shalka did not get Aerial Control Center. He got enough foundation for detection, though, and healing, which might have been what his main focus was. Detection, healing, harassment, and that Farapod didn't deal a whole lot of damage, but I'm sure Numbers is going to be sending back more Farapods. Shaka not making use of the Gate Tech that he had, except for the teleportation, which he didn't use enough. I do not see this going well for Shaka at all. He is not in a good position to deal with this right now. Numbers, once again in the future, not chronoporting back anything yet, but I'm sure he will be. Near the Unpolo Pass, it looks like another chronoport has occurred, not that one, but... Is that another one? Yes, that looks like it's a... No, it's not another Chrono Board. That's just a unit that was there earlier. So, no Chrono Board departures quite yet from where Numbers is, but there's some Chrono Board departures were there at some point. No, there's the Chrono Board departure here in the past. So, Numbers is double-checking that Chrono Board, seeing that it didn't work. More Test Pulsars coming in for Shaka, but Shaka really needs to make use of that Gate Tech. This green time wave is his death. The Far Farapod coming in is going to be dealing enough damage to take care of everything he has. I'm just so surprised he has not built Slip Gates yet. Getting more foundations, though, so definitely still in the game, unless there was just some weird bug that stopped, like, some something that didn't make him build slipgates, because I'm sure he would have built a slipgate. There is no reason for him not to build a slipgate, and that would have been much more useful than just using the teleport that he had. Oh, I don't know why I'm in fast forward, but he does have more far, or Numbers has more Faros coming in and Octa coming into the north, because there is a Zion Veer trying to take care of the north expansion. Not nearly enough to actually deal with anything, and Shalka, further in the past, does have a couple of Teth Pulsers, which... Thanks to the Foundations, we're able to actually detect this Farpod and get rid of it at the 1238 mark. So at the 1326 mark, we see that they're still alive quite well. And Zion Tercher not actually dealing with anything yet. The Zion Veer up here is dealing with some stuff. But Numbers, about the 1507 mark, has more Farpods coming in. He He's pretty much at liberty to do whatever he wants right now. He has chronoporting. He has enough units to take care of everything. And Shalka is trying to take care of this north base, but it's not going to work. Numbers is able to defend against that and has not actually sent anything back. I'm a bit concerned because this is about the time you do it. Seems to be more focused on this base and more foundations coming up for shot. Oh no, that's the foundation that came up earlier during that chronoport attack. The Farpods are not being sent back, which is causing me great concern. However, Octopods are being built in the northwest, so this is going to be 
Looks like Sh Numbers is just building up for a final attack. He's going to be able to take care of Shaka at his leisure right now. Octopod coming in to scout, double check what's going on. He's coming forward. The Octopod does see what's going on, does see there's not a lot of stuff going on at all. Annex is being set up. A spare Annex for Shaka is being set up at the 13, 14, no, 1430 mark have been started. And here we are. Numbers is attacking with some Faros, trying to get rid of these foundations. Not doing a, doing an okay job, but not doing the best job. I'm really surprised that no Farbots have come in yet. Just going to double check in the unplayable pass. No, no Farbots have been cornerported back. Back to when we were looking at the 1520 mark. We see that Farbots are coming up to defend the north base. And the Farbots are helping take care of the foundation, but another foundation has been built to help defend. And Shaka, like I said, really surprised he's not building gay tech or building more vehicles. He is building more RPs, however, around the map. He's gotten RPs everywhere around the map. Gotten comp up and smart idle enabled, so if he does have enough units to get anything going, he will be able to get them to you know, repair status effects or anything like that automatically. However, Numbers is not using any specials, nothing that would have status effects. He is focused on the unplayable pass, which leads me to believe he's chronoported back some units. But double checking around, it doesn't look like a chronoport has occurred. He's just double checking that pass point, and nothing really is happening here yet. So, looks like he's just scouting out the battle, possibly in a preparation for a chronoport. Make sure he chronoports when he needs to, or rather to the point in time that he needs to, because it's always good to know when you're chronoporting to, and what's going to be there when your units actually arrive. Otherwise, you're going to just waste them on early attacks. Admittedly, unplayable pass attacks are powerful, but if your opponent has good defenses against them, it's not going to make much difference. Now, I am seriously starting to get concerned that something actually happened with this replay. It looks like Numbers is still building up, but he's not attacking, and he's definitely at liberty to do so. He's been at liberty to do so for the last five minutes. Shaka, on the other hand... or sorry, this is Numbers' point in time. Shaka was our earlier focus. Numbers, even when he's focused, isn't going to be actually doing anything yet. His Faro is being retreated up to his base. He doesn't have anything other than the scouting Faro pod sending around the map. Some RP is being built up, but Shalka's got a lot of RPs coming in of his own. And not building much more than just these two Tath Pulsars. I really think that something's going on, and... Numbers seems to be preparing for something, actually. He's preparing for something... <laughs> Maybe he was just doing this just to troll it. And... Let me guess. Corona Port Depart... Oh, Shalka went back into the past. Just to double-check. He was really worried. Looks like... Poof. Where's Poof? And uh, numbers, I don't see a Poof. I think something, I think something borked. I, I think something borked. Shock, however, did surrender. Apparently, whatever actually did happen, I, I'm sorry about this. Argh. Need, I've, I've made a suggestion for redundancy checking in replays, so hopefully this won't happen. But, in the future. So, apparently a Chrono Porter attack actually did occur that did destroy Shaka's entire base and the unplayable pass from all these units. It would have been really nice to see. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my... well, first game worked out really well, second game not so well. Hope you enjoyed it anyway. And thank you for watching, everyone. All zero... oh, well, okay. YouTube will be the views. So anyway, have a good night, everyone, and thank you again for watching.